Okay, Giorgio, lovely to meet you. Sarah from The Upcoming. So tell me, what do you think is so important about this event? Well, in the climate, uh, this uh, very heavy Brexit wind that we get here at the moment, and everybody seems to be worried. This is a great show because it shows the variety of Italian food, the capacity of the Italian people to come out and represent themselves, and um, that uh, we must... Uh, we must fight for this, then we, this is a, a very important thing. And these produce are part of what Italy uh, background is all about. And, 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 and so that is so important to be here. It's so important for small producer to be here to show their little production. You have some very tiny company here. And this is something so, so important because this is the Italy that works, you know. This is the Italy, the Italy that, you know, shows their best face here. So that's why I like it. And there's been a long tradition of Italian cuisine here in the UK, mm. particularly in London. What do you think the current trends are? Well, I, I think that there is a little, you know, th there's so many different ingredients and so many different sort of uh, type of cuisine and they're still not very well known. Even if they, the English have started to understand them, we have regional cuisine. So one region to the other is very, very different. This is something that is coming up more and more and more. People now do come to restaurants and they don't say, oh, it's an Italian restaurant, this is a, a Lombard restaurant or a Sicilian restaurant. So this is one of the things that, it's really, that people have understood and they really still to understand. So we have to really try to keep on teaching them. You know? and, and what do you think about the restaurant scene in general in London? Oh, that's vibrant, isn't it? It's the most vibrant in Europe, I guess. And uh, it's definitely surpassed Paris for the difference of different high quality restaurants. Obviously, if you want to eat a three Michelin star sort of meal, you still go to Paris. But if you want to eat fantastic Chinese or fantastic India or fantastic Indonesia or fantastic Korea, London is the place to come at the moment. So we have this great mouth open to taste everything which you know sometimes in Europe they are a little bit conservative on that so this has been a great advantage for London and you know the rest I mean I think we open is that is it six months now we are on a six months I think in, already, in London 270 restaurants open in the first six months of of the year I don't know how many shot but yeah. you know I know that 260 open and you know some of that are already straight away classic we have a great representation of every cuisine at the highest level. That's very, very good. And you mentioned Brexit earlier. What do you mm. think the impact's going to be of that? <laughs> this is something then with it's very, very difficult to forecast what's going to happen. And uh, under many different, I mean, the, the problem that we're facing more is, you know, the staff, is, you know, like Italian people are actually running company like, I don't know, pret a manger Gordon Ramsay holding. If there wasn't Italian, they had to close tomorrow, these people. You know, literally, they'll lose like 70% of their staff. So this is something that, you know, is, I'm really, I actually a bit worried about it. And, you know, <coughs> I witnessed, I, I come here in 1985, and it, it was, Italy felt very, very far, especially for what's concerning ingredients. And slowly, slowly through all these 20 years, 25 years, I see coming closer and closer and closer. So now my word is then it's going to get far again. So, and small producer, it's, it's not the great distribution is going to suffer out of this, it's the small producer. And our strength is not in the great distribution, it's in the small producer. So this is maybe will be penalized at that. But we'll have to wait and see. English politicians are not as bad as, as Italian one. <laughs> So might, I hope they're going to do something good. And it might be the consumers that, that miss out in the end as well, not just producers. Definitely. This is the, the, the main thing is that. And the consumer will not have access to so many different things. And this is what the problem will be. But, you know, let's keep fingers crossed and see what goes like. And what's your favourite of the Italian produce to cook with? Uh, then I could do without. I don't know. It's very difficult. You know, I'm a chef, so every day I'm there. But, you know... I couldn't live without pasta, that's for sure. Uh, I, could not, I could not go one week without pasta. After three or four days, I had to have a plate of pasta, <laughs> whatever. But I don't know, there is, 
like I don't know, olive oil is one of the at the base of what we're doing. You know, the, all the cheeses. Uh, I mean, I don't know, ham is one of the things. You know, I mean, I had last night. I had a couple of slices of culatello. I felt like I was six years old. You know what I mean? It's like it's one of those things, and you know, helps you out so much. And I understand you're involved with this project for Victoria Felix. Is that right? Last yeah. week. Tell yeah. me about your experience with that. Oh, well, it's a really, really. Uh, <laughs> this is, as, as, as Massimo Bottura put it, this is it's not politics, this is, this is nothing, this is just pure mathematics. We throw away 60% of the food that we produce, and then there's people who go hungry. It's possible to find a way to redistribute that 60%. This is what Felix is all about. And, you know, obviously, um, the people on the ground, the volunteers, the works, uh, they do have limitation. So when chefs like us go in and try to inspire them and help them to put, push a little bit the boundary, that's very, very interesting. So this is, this is what it's all about. And it was an incredible day. It was just such a... You know, sometimes I go and cook for people and I get paid stupid kind of money, but I come back completely empty and like killed. I come back, I was so energetic that night, you know, because these people don't only take the food for you, they give you back. They give you something back then you know and in this this transaction is what my life is all about giving food and taking a little bit of something from that this is what it's all about for me and and finally us as british you know we, we do love our italian food but how can we be more discerning as consumers you know there's lots of italian restaurants out there how can we tell what's good what's not well good is what you like really good is what you like and, uh, you know, obviously education and knowledge that do help. And uh, so when you eat something to go and search and have a look of what it is and why is it made like that, to know a bit about it sometimes. Because in the last 30 or 40 years, we've been kind of like, put, says, oh, food is a pain in the neck for you to do it. We'll do it for you. We'll put it in this packet. You put it in the microwave. And the people have... You know, after 20, 30 years, they kind of feel like, hold on a minute, who are these guys? Why are they making so much money? And no, I want to see what I get it. And so this is what is, is interest. And I think, so a lot of money should go towards schools. And even, you know, the Italian, the Ministero dello Sviluppo Economico should invest on teaching kids in England what Italian food is. Because these guys, I want, they're going to want to have good Italian food as they grow up, as they know what they're talking about. This is very, very important.